What's up, y'all? This is Robert at Chaos Garage. We're back with the Les Paul build. So we're ready to put some clear coat on this thing today. Um, we've got the trim all done. Uh, we covered that in a different video. Uh, and then now we're ready to put all the clear coat on. Uh, and then after that, we'll go to the neck and ebonize the neck. And then we move to hardware. So... Um, today we've got to put three to four coats of clear coat on it. Uh, each coat is an hour to hour and a half in between. Um, so uh, I'll show you guys the first coat and uh, then we can keep going from there. So three to four coats, then I have to let it dry overnight and then we'll sand it uh, tomorrow. Uh, so it says to sand it with 400 grit sandpaper, um, and but I'll probably move to around 600. Uh, the instructions seem to be pretty abrasive on their on their sandpaper. So I'll probably go to 600. I'll see how 400 does, but I'll probably go to 600 and really try to smooth this out really good. And then it's another two to three coats tomorrow afternoon. And then it has to dry for a full week. Uh, once it dries, then it's got to be wet sanded uh, and then buffed and polished. Um, and then we go back to fitting all the holes and uh, putting hardware in and then also ebonizing the neck. So uh, today we're going to start the clear coat. So I've already warmed up my clear coat. I've got the um, uh, guitar lacquer clear gloss. It's hard to see because it's been sitting in warm water, but I've been shaking the heck out of this thing and then warmed it for 15 minutes in hot water, same as I did the others. Um, and we're ready to go. I don't want to get too thick. I just want to put a nice thin coat on it. Just like we did the other. Because we're going to be putting several coats on it. So. Getting a little bit of spitting. I just noticed it coming off the tip of the spray can. This is the problem that I'm seeing with spray cans. So I'm just kind of backing up a little bit. Again, I don't want to get this thing too heavy. Nice thin coats. Um, if we miss anything on the first coat, we'll pick it up on the second and third coat. So, alrighty, we'll let it dry for an hour, hit it again. So I just want to cover a few things that I've done <clears throat> uh, before I go any further. Uh, let's see, so just to <clears throat> kind of recap a little bit, if you've watched the other videos, we have um, laid down all the paint. Uh, with the sunburst, I added an extra black to the edge of the sunburst that is not normally on the traditional uh, Les Paul sunburst model, but <clears throat> I really like it. I <clears throat> then I turned around and uh, did the whole body um, with the neck uh, and the peg head all black. And then I went and laid down the clear coat. So, uh, it says in the book to put three to four layers of clear coat down with an hour dry time in between each one. Uh, so I did just that. I put four layers down. Uh, this is Monday. I did that on Friday. And then it says to wait 24 hours to allow to dry after the fourth coat and then sand with 400 grit sandpaper 
and then lay another two to three coats of clear. So that's where we're at. I did lay down the clear coat really nice and super thin. Uh, the video that you uh, watched right before this was uh, the first coat of clear. I laid four. Uh, and then I laid it down just super, super thin all the way through. Uh, front and back to keep and make sure that I don't get any kind of runs or or anything like that on there and I get really good coverage all the way around. Uh, everything looks really well. Um, I'm really pleased with it. I do notice that uh, if you remember right, I didn't use grain filler like the instructions <clears throat> recommended and that Stumac uh, provided with the build kit. Uh, I'd never used it before. I, I know the purpose of it and and uh, I'm actually taking a look at this guitar, and I'm I'm I, I'm really seeing why they recommend uh, the grain filler because uh, you can you can really see the grain in this guitar in the back. Now it's not deep; it's super super smooth, uh, but I can definitely feel it as I run my fingers over it. And then I the neck is really good though. Um, you know it's. I can see some grain in the neck, but the neck is super, super smooth. Um, <clears throat> no ripples or anything from the clear coat. The face, you can even see the grain uh, in the face as well. Um, now I got a guy <clears throat> that's in the same building here that I'm at, um, and he's got a recording studio uh, here, and he's in a local band they do a lot of practicing here and and uh just got himself a really good studio and sound room over there so um you know i i talked to him a lot about this les paul he's excited to see the les paul he's got he's got a couple of them uh he's never seen one built uh so he's been kind of watching me this whole time and and really excited to uh to see it finished and play uh, i want him to play it he actually plays way better than i do so um but he said he's actually digging the grain in here. He said he's he loves the fact that we can see a little bit of the grain. So I guess it's just kind of what you're into. Um, you know, we can see it here. It's not, there's, there's no, I can't feel any of it on the face, although it is highly visible. So, but it looks good. I think that's the one thing I notice. Uh, I think on the next guitar, I'm going to use the grain filler. Uh, just to see if I can hide some of that grain a little bit and just make it look nice and smooth and flat. Um, you know, uh, but I guess it's what you're into. So today we're going to, oh, uh, let me back up a little bit. So I trimmed the trim. If you notice, I did not not trim it on the top. Uh, like I said, I was going to. So <clears throat> um, it wasn't too hard. Uh, it was definitely something I was afraid of. I was kind of scared of of going in and trimming this and really doing it exact right and getting down into this black uh, I was afraid I was going to scrape the trim and then kind of push down too much into the black and I never did um, it was actually not too hard uh, but definitely something that you want to take your time with man some of those videos that shows those guys just going super fast across here and getting that done but um uh, I took my time. It definitely takes your time uh, to do it. Uh, but I did not come across the front here because as, a, as you can see, the trim is kind of thick here on the sides. But on the top, it's super, super thin. So it only comes back to like here. So, you know, like a quarter of the thickness here on the top. And although I would have really liked to see that trim line on the front when looking at the guitar from the front... Um, I just, I just didn't want to peel into the face. Uh, and again, chance that razor blade going too far, chance any kind of cracking or chipping or anything while I'm trying to find the edge of that line. You can't really see the edge of that trim line at all. So this would have been a huge piece of guesswork. Uh, so what I did is I did the sides. I used a series of, uh, razor blades. I took one of these razor blades out. Uh, did it by hand, put it back in, and, and used it to where I can really use my thumb 
to just uh, kind of guide along the edges. Uh, watch your fingernails though uh, as you're going across there so you don't scratch the lacquer. Um, I used one of these razor blades as well, a little X-Acto knife. And uh, I just kind of took my time and went in and, and cleaned everything up all the way across here. Uh, this was, I think, the hardest part here and the edge, the corner here, because the radius trying to get over, over that corner. Um, and then down into here, because I still have the neck taped off. Uh, and I've got trim to do on the side of the neck as well eventually when I peel the, the tape off of the neck and start the neck. Um, and you can see there is one little spot right here where I did go past into the black, but that's the only spot on the entire guitar um, so far. But this was a harder area because you're trying to come in and scrape this flat, then you have the neck right above it. So um, I had to really come in with that X-Acto knife and get into those corners and just kind of scrape everything off there. Uh, then I went and took, just to kind of edge everything out, uh, I took the razor blade and, uh, and rolled it on the corner um, at an angle. So you've got the front and back, or the side, you got the top, and then I angled it at like a uh, 45 degree angle. And then I went across the whole edge that way, just to really make sure that that edge of that paint is really nice and even all the way around. I had a little blowout on the bottom here where the edge of the tape was actually just kind of sticking up like this when I painted it. Um, and it caused a little bit of fray on the paint right here on the edge. So doing that allowed me to blend all that in while doing the rest of it. So it turned out really good. I'm happy with it. I'm happy with not doing the trim on the front. Uh, I, like I said, the next one, I definitely want to. Um, so <clears throat> I, I want to uh, see what I can do about figuring out how to mask this off. Because this high heat tape actually works really good with creating a nice straight line. I almost never had to come in towards the black here because it was all masked off good. It was just some blowout on these inner corners here uh, towards the face, so uh, I did that. Okay, so next uh, I'm gonna sand everything down. I'm actually gonna use 600 sandpaper instead of 400 sandpaper, like they said. So I've got the, uh, the Ace Hardware P600 sandpaper. Um, so I'm going to be doing that by hand. I'm going to be doing uh, everything just super, super light. I don't want to dig through any of the clear coat uh, and just kind of going in and taking out any um, imperfectness or, you know, any ripples or anything like that and just smoothing that clear coat. And then I'm going to come back and put three coats of clear coat on it today. Now, after the three coats of clear coat, it's supposed to sit for a week um, before coming back in and wet sanding and buffing um, but once we let it sit for a week then and i'll probably do some neck work in the meantime uh, so that way it's just not sitting for a week uh, but uh, yeah it'll be a week after today uh, before i come back and do any kind of wet sanding on here to really make sure everything's got a high shine and then putting some wax on it or what have you and just really buffing this thing out uh, to just a magnificent shine. So it's already starting to shine. Um, I used the high gloss, uh, uh, clear high gloss. Uh, I'll put a link in it down below, and I've got a link on some of the other videos to the high gloss as well. You can find it on Stumac, and then you can also find it on Amazon uh, for the same brand that we've been using of the lacquer. Uh, but it also comes with the build kit as well. So anyway, uh, here we go.